Hi there, this is Adam Jones from Boat Life. Hope you guys are well. Today is a bit of a special video. I'm with Kevin and Linda Sawyer. I'm down at Ting Dean uh, Boats and Marinas in Caversham, just outside of Reading. I'm sat on this Viking 65 foot canal boat. It's a wide beam canal boat. It's absolutely stunning. And this is Kevin and Linda's brand new Viking boat. So thank you so much for having me, guys. You're welcome. How are you? Very well. Good. Good. I know it's a bit nerve-wracking talking on camera for the first time, so don't worry. Um, the reason that I've come to, to see Kevin and Linda is that, for starters, they came to the Boat Life show in February and obviously saw some of the boats um, that Ting Dean brought to the show and were having conversations about, you know, starting their wide beam journey and living full time on the on the river. Um, and then I want to find out a little bit more about this boat, why canal boating for you guys, and how your journeys um, begun. So I guess let's start with the first thing, how did you find Boat Life, the show this year? Very good, uh, very informative. We didn't realize there was so much involved in boating until we actually went to the, the show. Yeah. Uh, we had been to Crick before, but going to that was more, I'll say more informative. Good. It, it, it was wide, uh, eye, eye widening yeah. experience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it, sh it shows the breadth of the community, doesn't it? Yeah. And it's, yeah. I think, it's nice to, obviously before you buy a boat, it's nice to go and look round boats, but then now you guys have got one, I imagine next year's show, you're going to be looking at all of the little knickknacks and things that you might need for your boat. Yeah. And suddenly the electronics mean a bit more than they did 12 months ago, where it was all about which boat you're going to have. That's right. And, I, and as you guys, I know, you already know from doing narrow boat holidays, which we'll talk about in a minute, but the community around... The inland boating is fantastic, isn't it? And Crick is a great example of it. You yes, get a, yeah. a real sense of what it's like to be an owner of boats. And I find it, uh, as a fisherman, and, and kind of obviously being around all of the different sectors, I love the way that when people introduce themselves, they introduce themselves, their boat, and how long their boat is. It's, <laughs> <laughs> it's a, a really cool thing. My my mum always had an Argo when we were kids. We went to some Argo cooking classes, and it would always be the same thing. You know, my name's Janet, and I've got a full oven. It's like a, a whole language that is of its own. So, um... Tell us a little bit about this boat that we're on now. So this is a Viking 65. Yep. Tell me, you know, what, obviously it's a wide beam. How did you come to make the choice for the Viking 65? When we first arrived at the marina uh, two years ago now, we were looking at narrowboats. Yep. Um, when we spoke to Guy, the guy in the office, yep. he said, we've got, a wide beam that's been delivered, not been taken over by its owner yet. Yeah. But don't go and see it. <laughs> I love this story. And it was the fact that he said, "Don't go and see it." Yeah. And Lynn says, "Why?" He says, "Don't go and see it because you, you go down there, you won't want to go back to an arrow." Yeah. So we went down, got down on the main deck, and we both thought, "Home." Oh. Amazing. Yeah. So cool. And you can you get that sense. We've just down, downstairs yeah. talking about this, and yeah. you know, I've been on lots of canal boats in my time. But you you stand on a wide beam, and when there's three of us in the kitchen area, exactly, you're not thinking about where am I standing? Am I too close to somebody? Should I get out of the way? Yeah. Um, and obviously, it's horses for courses. You know, lots of people love their narrow boats, and I think especially, well, I say it's horses for courses, isn't it? But exactly. for you guys, the wide beam made more sense. Yes. Yeah. As as a permanent home, yes. Yeah. Uh, yes, narrowboat would have been easier in moving around the, the country on the canals. Yeah. But thinking logically, there's not enough room to live aboard. People say, yes, there is enough room. Yeah. But to us, we thought, no, it would be too cramped. It's interesting, isn't it? Because you so you've done your holidays all on narrow boats, I would yes, assume. Yeah. With family. Yeah, yeah family with family friends. and you know, so there is space to be on them yes. and it is it's like I said, it's probably the best way to describe it, it's horses for courses, isn't it? Yeah. Some people like that slightly more compact and the fact that obviously you can just go everywhere that you want to exactly, go. Yeah. Um but you guys think that, you know, currently the south is enough Yes. Boating. Yeah. If you if you think you go from London to Bath and Bristol, just over a hundred miles quite a few locks yeah and you can only go walking pace yeah you it's going to take you days Months. weeks to get down there <laughs> in the first place yeah yeah and then if you stop off every every few miles for a week or so yeah and then carry on that's a year gone before you know it 
Sounds delightful, to be honest. Then you've got to get back again. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, you've always got somewhere yeah, to move to. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. That's yeah. cool. So when you were doing your boating holidays, where were you going? Which parts of the canal network do you know? We well? did the top end of the um, Oxford Canal. Yep. Down to Banbury and back okay. up again. Yep. I've also done the Stourport Ring. Okay. And we've done the Norfolk Broads. Fantastic. All lovely parts of the system, yes. aren't they? Yes. Norfolk Broads is yes is lovely as well, isn't it? Yeah. Um, can you get to the? You can't. Can you boat to the broads by going? You can't go. I don't think you can get to it. No, that's a shame actually, because that is its own little system. But yeah. I think we were just discussing. It's there's so many options, and they're all so beautiful. And obviously, we're on the the Thames at the moment, Thames and Kennet Marina. So we're not far away from the junction to get onto the Kennet and Avon Canal, and a whole different system again. Exactly. Yeah. Smaller, shallower in places. Obviously, I know both systems from both boating and and fishing. Um, talking about the Grand Union, and it, there really is a whole lot of boating to oh, be yes. done. Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, it's very exciting. One of the things from my layman's side um, that I asked the question of, and I think it, for anybody that's trying to get into this, my, my question even from a powerboat standpoint is, how do you learn how to do these things? Did you find it difficult to learn? Was it daunting? And to me, you know, this is a 65-foot boat. It would be pretty daunting, even, even at slow speed, to manoeuvre this around. Firstly, how have you found it in terms of, has it been easy to learn? It was very easy. Yeah. Um, obviously, when you do, do the narrowboat holidays, you get five minutes tuition yeah. on how to do, and then you're off, and you learn as you go. Yeah. With this, we, we had the guys come down from the marinas. The lengthwise, there's no difference. Yeah. Because it's normally 65, 70 foot long. Yeah. Width-wise, the only thing you can't do is hold onto the tiller and lean over the side and think, oh, I'm close enough there. Yeah, yeah. That's the only, only difference. Um, but manoeuvrability is a lot easier than a narrowboat. Yeah, and so you've got bow thrusters on bow the front. Thrusters, yeah. yeah, and then you said seventy-five horsepower yeah. at the back. Yeah, each marine. Interesting. I, I love that concept as well because again, this is all um, as a layman. It's relatively um, new to me. So the guys from Ting Dean came with you from Windsor. Yeah. Yes. To here. Yes. And yeah. you did however many locks that is. It's a a few, isn't it? Let's give their names a mention. Nathan and Rachel. Nathan and Rachel. And, the you know, incidentally, the guys at Ting Dean, all of them are fantastic. Oh, brilliant. Yeah, and I think yeah. that's a boating, buying journey for all of us in all our various different parts of the community, be that fishing boats, big boats, sea boats, narrow boats, wide beams. The buying journey is the, the hardest part sometimes. You can feel, I certainly can anyway, sometimes you feel like you don't know enough to walk in and ask questions or, you know, a, a friendly broker or a friendly um, chandri or any friendly person within boating can just make it so easy can't they yes and these guys i think are are excellent for it um and so so you came from windsor to here with the guys which yeah. is yeah. 20 or so locks i think is that right 10 uh, 10. 10, 10 10 locks okay cool 12 hour journey yeah which was a long day yeah it was a long day yeah <laughs> long day. lots learned yeah oh yes yeah, yeah. Locks are locks feel big, but they're yeah, they're fine they, once you've done them. They were all the electronic yeah. ones, and, and Rachel taught me how to use those. Yeah. and uh, I'm quite confident with those now. Yeah, did you press any of the buttons in the wrong order to start off with and time uh, them oh, out? Yes. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> and Rachel put me right. This, yeah. This. this, this Good. How you do it. I remember the first time I went through one, I um I did the wrong order, and it, then you can just stand there like a lemon for yes. ages whilst it's resetting, exactly, can't you? Yes. No lock keeper, boat's queuing up behind, <laughs> yeah. becomes a bit sweaty quite quickly. Yes. Yeah. Um. So in terms of your plan, you've you've come out of a house and you're now on this full yes. time. Yeah. The plan is to just boat around the country and yeah. enjoy yourselves. Continuous cruise. Yeah. And that's it. It's just we, beautiful. I mean, we started off. We had a two bed bungalow. Yeah. And we'd paid the mortgage and we were still working. We thought, we don't want to work anymore. Yeah. We love canal boats. So it's time to retire early, sell the bungalow. And because in the meantime, COVID happened and various other things happened. Therefore, it took uh, about two years to complete on the boat. Yeah, yeah. But before that, we'd already sold the bungalow. So we are now nowhere to live. Yeah. But we had a caravan. And a very good friend of ours, Sue and Nigel, um, let us pitch our caravan on their driveway. Yeah. Connected to electric and the water, and we lived there for a year. Gotta love good friends, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> They're going to get some free holidays on the yes, boat, I'd imagine. Yeah. Yes. So um, that's cool. Thank well, it's you to it's them. it's yeah. a it's a bit it's my my parents when they redid their house, they lived in a caravan for ages, bought a wreck, and did yeah. it up. It's that same thing, isn't it? It's a real commitment yeah. to 
to the journey but what a journey when you walk down through and we'll go we'll have a look on the boat i'll do some kind of some videoing of it we saw each other at crick which yeah. wasn't that long ago maybe only a month or so yes. ago and this was just a shell of yes. a boat um and now it really does feel like yes. like home yeah. and it's yeah. it's a fantastic place to spend some time must be lovely to have friends around and yeah. spare yeah. rooms and yeah. it really does feel like an apartment on the water it does yeah, yeah it's gonna say it, it was literally a shell when yeah. it was on the show at yeah. the crick and I do think a lot of that people were put off because there wasn't it wasn't all furnished. Yeah. But the reason for that is we wanted to put our own mark on it and put our own furniture in it. Yeah. So therefore, there wasn't much on at uh, the Creek Show. Yeah, and I think that that's the thing with these with something like this is that you can fulfil your imagination of what yeah. you want it to be, can't you? And almost that's more exciting. And yeah. That's what I've seen from going to all of the various shows and these chanderies and the amount of stuff that's available for these boats. Well, and fine, there's fine. it's a whole subculture this yeah. canal boat yeah. river boating yeah. thing. Well, Viking canal boats they they would provide everything. Right. Yeah. They, fully. They would provide the the sofa, the TV, the beds, everything, the lot. Yeah. The, the chairs for the the dining room, and we said, no, we want to choose our own sofa. Yeah. We already had a TV. Why we want to Buy another TV. Yeah. So we we, well, we eventually did have to buy another TV, yeah. but that's. Yeah. But it was our own stamp on on the boat. Yeah. yeah. The as colours a, we wanted. As yeah. opposed to yeah. them. Well, it's like we again. We'll see some more on the videos, but you've got those lovely drawers down the side of yeah. the yes. the corridor, which is a really nice use of space. Yeah. And like you were saying, you didn't want an island because no. that takes up big space in the middle of in the, the boat kitchen, exactly. yeah, yeah and room. you can place that storage somewhere else but some people would love to have an island and yeah. Yeah. you know maybe if it was a holiday boat it might make more sense with an island yeah. and if you've got to be on it all the time you're going to make different choices um so in terms of how easy have you found it being in the marina and dealing with all of the things that go you know shore power and i know you've done holidays before but we we're talking about the wi-fi downstairs is there anything that you've found since having the boat that's been a bit of a stumbling block or that if you were giving people advice for the first time that they've gone through this process that you've learned that you could pass on i think ideally you need to be on a marina for the first month of moving on just so you can get yourself sorted out unpack layer the land and get rid of i would, I would say 80 percent 80, 80 of the stuff that we brought on board We've kept, yeah, but there's only twenty percent that we've had to. You've decided before you've even brought it on yeah. that it's not going to fit. Yeah. Yeah. You've got to know the space, and yeah. yeah, yeah, and you've got a chance, like you said, to go out and do a bit of boating. That's yeah. right. Come back, you know, you've always got somewhere to yeah. to moor up yeah. for for the overnight. Get used to the guys here. That's right. Get used to the services and all of the stuff that you'll need to get used yes. to whilst you're on the water. Yeah. Um, again, lamest term question for me, but whilst you're on the water and you're parked up in, say, Oxford. What's your power situation? How does the boat power itself? Obviously, you can't be in shore power the whole We've time. We've got uh, four solar panels. Yep. That's enough to power virtually everything on board. And if the power in the batteries drops, then we've got the generator that will kick in automatically. Cool. Uh, is that a diesel? Diesel generator. Diesel generator. Yeah. Okay, fantastic. And I guess, you know, the big question is, if somebody like you is sat on the other side of this lens thinking about it, what would you say to them? Go for it. Yeah, absolutely. Go for it. Yeah. We are so happy. Yeah, it's it's a dream come true. It Fantastic. Really is. Yeah, I can tell. And like you know, like I said, we met a crick. The boat was a bit of a shell. We're here now. It's definitely home. You guys are. You know, I can instantly at home within yeah. the boat. Um, so thank you so much for for having me. Um, oh. I, if if you wouldn't mind, at some point I'll come back on in maybe a few months' time and yeah. see how yes. you're getting on. Yeah. Yes. find out how you're finding that navigation journey and yeah. any learnings that you've had and there, there's going to be some interesting stories oh, yes. I'm sure <laughs> <laughs> yes. so when the river starts going on red boards or you're in the wrong place or whatever it is I'll but let you know how many times I've fallen in <laughs> yeah exactly do not fall in um, not unless you're trying to fall in um, so thank you so much it's been an absolute pleasure to see you guys thank you very much um, like we said if you're thinking about it do it um, and also if you want to find out more then Boat Life, the event in February next year is a great place to come and meet the community. But obviously all of our um, exhibitors for the likes of Ting Ding are another great place to come and ask the questions. No question is a stupid question. And if you are thinking about it, get into one of these dealers and ask them some questions about getting yourself on the water. Speak to you guys soon.